Hello. Uh, in this video, we are going to be continuing on going through my book, The Effect, which is available for free on theeffectbook.net. You can also find links to buy it there. So in this video, we're going to be talking about how to describe variables. That's kind of a weird goal here. But what are we talking? What am I talking about? So you, we have data. We are looking at data. We're doing quantitative research, uh, and we have all these variables in our data. And what a variable is is it's a measurement that you take over and over again over different observations, uh, and you write down the same thing every time, right? I've looked at this field of flowers, and I want to record the height of every flower. So I record the height of this flower, and the height of that flower, and the height of this flower, and da 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 da. I've got thousands of flowers now in my database, and I have the variable flower height, which is different for every flower. Great, that's what a variable is. So why are we so might be so focused on describing them? What does that even mean? Describing a variable is taking that entire data set of flower heights that we have, and I want to be able to tell somebody what that variable looks like, right? I want to be able to describe for them what is in that variable, right? What is it generally? What does a typical flower height look like? Uh, how much does it vary? Are there a lot of short flowers and tall flowers or are they all pretty much the same height, right? My goal here is without making somebody look through my entire data set of thousands of flower heights and figure it all out for themselves, I want to be able to summarize or describe for them what that variable is. And so in this video, we're going to be focusing on uh, just one variable at a time, and we'll do that for a couple of videos. And then I'll talk about how to look at the relationship between different variables and describe those. So in this video specifically, I'm going to talk about the different kinds of variables that we might see, uh, which will, of course, call for different kinds of descriptions. So a sort of quick rundown here. There are going to be five main kinds of variables that at least that I'm going to think about. I'm sure you can think of a couple corner cases that don't fit into this. First, continuous variables. Uh, continuous variables are variables that can really take any value, perhaps any value within a certain range, um, but it can also get more finely detailed. So for example, the flower heights that I mentioned, right? How tall is a flower? Well, it's not that this flower is 10 inches tall and this flower is 11 inches tall, but I mean, really this flower is 10.132765 inches tall if I really measure it precisely enough. And this other one is 11.12321, right? When you have a continuous variable, uh, there's no, you know, next value up, it's, it moves continuously, right? It's not that this flower is the next highest compared to that other flower, it's that it's just a little bit higher. That's what a continuous variable is. It can take anything in a range of values as long as you measure it precisely enough. So that's one, continuous variables. Next up is count variable. A count variable is just like it sounds. It is a count of something. You are counting up how many of something there are. Uh, this can only be a whole number because you can only count whole numbers. So for example, this might be how many flowers are in the field today? That could be a count variable. Uh, so this can go from zero all the way up to really, really big. Uh, and this is going to uh, be important when we're describing them because A, we're going to need to take into account it's always going to be a whole number. Uh, can't be negative. You can't count something a negative number of times, usually, at least in some weird corner cases. Um, but that's going to be the second kind of variable that we're looking at, which is counting. Coming up behind that is ordinal data. What ordinal data is, is it's data where there's not really a number there, right? We might use a number to describe it, but it's not really numerical. Really what it is, is order. So you might have something that is more than something else, but it's not necessarily clear how much more. So for example, education is a great example of this. So you might have somebody with an elementary school uh, education, somebody else with a middle school education, somebody else with a high school education, somebody else with a college education, somebody else with a PhD, whatever, right? Now, we would probably all agree that the person with the middle school education has more education than the person with the elementary school. Somebody with the high school has more education than the somebody with the middle school, and so on. But it's not like, you know, high school is one more than middle school, and middle school is 0.5 more than elementary school. Like, that's not how it works, right? We just know that one is more than the other, not necessarily how much more. We can put them in an order, ordinal, uh, but not necessarily, we can't give them absolute values that make any sense. That's ordinal data, which of course we need to take into account because we can't just like take an average of that. Because like if I took an average, what would I be taking an average of? I'm taking an average of elementary and high school and college, and I'm averaging those together to get Ella high school college. Doesn't make any sense, right? I can't and I can't put numbers on there to average out. So we need to consider how we would do that as well. Slightly more generic even than the ordinal variables are categorical variables. Categorical variable is when you have different categories that you can fit into. These are mutually exclusive categories, um, but they're not ordered. So, you know, in the case of, you know, elementary, middle, high school, we sort of could generally agree probably that middle school is more than elementary school. High school is more than middle school. I'm using American education terms here 
Um, but you can imagine there's probably similar systems in whatever country you're in where you got, you know, different levels of school. The categorical, there's no such order. We have different categories, but it's not that such as one is more than the other, but it's different. So for example, you might have keeping with education, you might have college majors. Somebody might be an engineering major. Somebody else might be a biology major. Somebody else might be an English major. It's not like engineering is more of a major than English. They're just different, right? They're different categories. Uh, categorical variables also contain binary variables where you can only be in one category or the other. So it's a categorical variable with only two options. So for example, um, you might ask somebody, uh, are they left-handed or not, right? So a categorical variable might be, are you left-handed or right-handed or ambidextrous, or do you are you missing hands, right? Maybe those are the only possible categories. Uh, binary would only be two options. You either are left-handed or you are not left-handed, uh, which would be another version of a categorical variable. Both categorical and binary variables in particular come up a lot in social science research because there are a lot of categories that we're interested in comparing the points. So that's going to be important to think about, especially when we get to looking at relationships as well. Finally, we have something that we're not going to cover a whole lot in these videos or in the book, which is qualitative variables. Now, these are variables that are, can't really be represented mathematically, they're just too complex. So, for example, you know, the text of a newspaper article is a qualitative variable. It's got a lot of text in it. Uh, if you wanted to interpret it, you might have to read it directly as opposed to just having a number that represents something like you could take the text of a newspaper article and say, this is the number of words in this article. That would be a count variable. But the actual text, the meaning of the article, that's qualitative, right? You might try to turn it into some one of the other variable types by coding it, by going through the article and saying, okay, I think this article is about inflation uh, and the military. And so I'm going to put it in the inflation category. I'm also going to put it in the military category. Um, but it's a qualitative variable. It's not really meant to be used mathematically. If you wanted to use it mathematically, which is what we're doing in this course, really, uh, you would need to then turn it into some other kind of variable like we talked about, you know, continuous count ordinal categorical. All right, so those are the five main kinds of variables that we can think about. Uh, and so we're gonna be focusing largely on the first four when we're talking about describing variables and describing relationships in these videos. Uh, and it's important to think about what kind of data you have because the way that you're going to describe a variable depends on the kind of variable that you have. And you wanna make sure that you are doing the right kind of thing. All right, that's it. Thank you.